Hello, welcome. This is Jensen Wires. In this video, I'm gonna celebrate the 500 YouTube followers. I can't believe we made it so far. I did not expect it. Uh, I did not promote the YouTube channel, to be honest. But here we are, and now I'm daydreaming of reaching the 1000 subscribers. So thank you so much for hitting the thumbs up button, uh, the subscribe button, and sharing this YouTube channel if you like what I'm doing. In this video, as an appreciation, I'm gonna be talking about what I learned in terms of tools and setup for playing solo RPG. Um, we're gonna go through virtual tabletops, different utilities, the emulators I have been creating there, uh, like the plot unfolding machine and the game unfolding machine, among others. And I'm sure you're gonna learn something because there's a lot in there and for sure this will help you play those RPG you want to play without the game master figure. So, with that said, this is Jensen Vars, and let's get started. Well, with the first tool I want to start talking about is the infamous Foundry VTT or Foundry Virtual Tabletop. What makes this Virtual Tabletop so famous and popular lately? Well, for starters, you pay just once and it's yours forever. Second, you have to host it yourself. And that is good and bad. Bad because you need to be a bit of a tech sa savvy to be able to learn how to set it up in your own computer so others can connect to your computer from outside or maybe host it in the cloud. Um, but the good thing about that is that the data and the world and the game content is like in your server and uh, it's not somewhere else and you don't rely on a service provider, right? Like imagine Roll20 or other services Maybe in five, ten years, who knows, they get changed or replaced or hacked and then you lose everything you have there. Just to give a worst case scenario example, Foundry VTT is like yours to maintain, to back up, the data is yours. So that makes it very tempting. And the third advantage it has is that it has a very, very good um, developer's uh, kit that enables a lot of community people to develop their systems, their RPG systems and also other modules and that's where I fell into. I developed lots of plugins for Foundry, mostly for my group games with my players, like things I didn't like about Stock Foundry, I changed them and published them as modules and that's how I started and it got many, many downloads. So that's what Foundry is, is strong for. And the reason for Foundry also to be good or why would I choose it to play is when it comes to automation. So it's heavy on the digitalization of RPGs. For the typical examples are playing crunchy system that have a lot of housekeeping. Players might not always know the rules and there's a lot of slowdowns in like figuring out how mechanics work. So for example, here in my screen, there is a Starfinder system and uh, you can create characters in like a few clicks if you know what you're doing. And then you just click on a scale roll and then dice will be rolled for you and you'll get the outcome automatically calculating the skill bonuses other penalties you might have and then your character sheets are here so you can handle um, and quickly open everybody's sheets uh, on top of that you can handle like items uh, journals i don't have many of course this is just a test system you can take notes you can uh, create your own random tables and uh, roll them so it's like pretty, pretty feature complete. If you are up to that challenge of like self-hosting and knowing how it works, it has a steep learning curve. Um, but if you're playing uh, crunchy games or if you're playing with other friends, uh, with group games, it's, it's really worth it. Um, now, if you are more a theater of the mind player and you really need, want to keep sim things simple and just roll dice and play that, um, in the RPG or un, or typically unsupported game, then um, I would not choose Foundry uh, to play with. So, for example, if you ask me where would I play Powered by the Apocalypse, Fate or other stranger or less popular systems, I would go with other tools. We're going to watch them later. My Mythic GME tools module uh, with it. It's famous for Mythic, it's, it's how it started. By default, it comes with this panel. And from there, you can just one click play Mythic. You just open the character lists, fill them in. You can roll on the elements table and get the immediate results on the chat. 
um, among other things, you can ask role uh, oracle questions, change the chaos factor, and uh, yes, just very, very simply get started with it. You can also use the chat as a means to journal your game. Um, in that regard, you just click a character and speak or chat on their behalf, like, hey there. And you're going to get a bubble on top of the token, but also it's going to be journaled as the speaker. So if you want a digital setup, it's pretty complete. You can journal or do world building around here. Um, and uh, you can create pages in there and just write stuff down using even markdown syntax. That is extremely convenient and what's most important as well or extremely interesting is that you can drag and drop um, stuff into it and then you're gonna generate like links to stuff so like uh, a very complete wiki system you can link to actors to items integrate things together and from there open your character sheets and do so on and so forth and with my magic mythic gme tools you can play mythic as well as my own Oracle systems like Plot and Folding Machine um, or Game Unfolding Machine. I need to update it to the latest version of those Oracles, but with just one click, you get access to all of that stuff. To introduce my tool called Play by the Writing, I'm gonna talk about Obsidian first. Obsidian is this super mighty note-taking application that is fantastically great especially if you have a big screen on my opinion you can use it on your phone i really like admire the people who use it on their phones i feel i need this space to open many things at the same time so i could never personally play on my phone but obsidian has also plugins support and in my opinion the must have for playing rpgs are the dice roller plugin which enables you rolling dice from the sidebar um, next is the Excalidraw plugin, which is like a, this whiteboard plugin that leaves you with room to do free form drawing and stuff like that. I use that for character sheets. I have a, an Obsidian tutorial, check it out if you want to know how to set this up. I use it for character sheets. As you can see, this is the character sheets of the Veil, an unsupported system in Foundry. So here I have the freedom of playing like old school. I just circle things down, write my own numbers on it, and then use the dice roller to just play. Um, next, I have I use the canvas from Obsidian to represent my table. So I play out here my games, my oracle systems, my most important notes, my character sheets, cheat sheets and so on in one single big view where I can access everything quickly by right clicking on it and opening in a new window for example um, uh, and then just just like accessing very quickly to my game resources. Obsidian score is to take notes so here to the left you can see the typical way you just write down notes in Obsidian and what's great you can link things together too, like one note to another. So you can link a character's note page in your note and then you can click it and then it will take you to your character. So you can be very creative when it comes to world building. I think it's a fantastic tool. It's an offline tool unless you pay. So the data also stays in your computer, making it very interesting for solo players who don't need cloud interactions and so on. But from there, I want to introduce my Espanso software. It's called Play by the Writing. All of the links of my tools will be in the description down below in the YouTube. Allows you to roll Oracle and dice from the text typing um, mechanism. So of course, Obsidian is just an example. You don't have to play in Obsidian. Espanso works everywhere. But let's give you an example. For example, I want to roll 2d12 quickly. I just write down colon R 2d12 period and it will expand in a dice roll. So for those of you who play by the writing or play by writing, that's the name of the plugin. This plugin does that for you. You can roll any complex dice like exploding dice for the Savage Worlds, for example, by doing 
double R for complex dice rolling, and then you do 2d6 E, uh, no, X for exploding, period, and then you get exploding dice, as you can see on the screen. Um, a 6 exploded, and I rolled one more. Um, so you get the dice result over there. What else is it in there? Everything I included is a lot of content. For example, mythic rolls. Uh, you can do M fate check, I think. It's the syntax, if I remember, and the chaos number. And then you get an oracle check right away. So just, just typing things. You need, of course, practice to remember these commands. Uh, but then you just write and then write into the text, introduce your oracle rolls, which is great. You can also do plot unfolding machine with QQ will give you oracle answers super quickly. Yes, obviously, yes for now, not no for now, etc. On top of that, you can have your own lists. This will take some time to explain, but you can access all of the lists that you upload to this plugin by placing them in a folder then just browse them when you don't remember the command you can roll them from here for example game and folding machine scene and then you click it and it will expand this oracle roll over there and the last feature the premium feature uh, is chat gpt and dal e for image generation let's take a look i can do ai complete and i say i don't know capital of france right uh, press control enter and then in your chat, you're gonna get chat GPT. Um, super convenient, you're just writing down, you don't have to look elsewhere in your own note-taking application, you call it. Doesn't have to be Obsidian, again, this will work just as good in a notepad. So you do AI complete over here and, and say, I don't know, um, protagonists from Resident Evil. And um, just over there you get ChatGPT answering you wherever you are. This is Espanso, not my plugin, but my plugin does this ChatGPT integration. And the last one you might like is the image generator over there in Obsidian with Markdown integration. You do AI image and you say, I don't know, Cyberpunk Soldier. And um, you're gonna get an image right away in your Obsidian node without copy pasting anything. If the demo doesn't fail, as you see, you get the image generator. I think it's an old version of DALI, so these images are pretty bad. I'm gonna update it soon, but super convenient if you're writing in Obsidian and just generate an image right away from there. Here we are. These are my booklets, my creations, my homebrews for playing solo RPGs. Um, plot unfolding machine, scene unfolding machine, game unfolding machine. I update them very often because I want to refine them as I go and get them as better as I can. So I know some of that bothers some of you for printing it and the next day missing the latest version. Plot and Folding Machine is the core GM emulator to play. So this would be like conflicting with Mythic GME emulator or Opse or Mune or any emulators of your preference because it has the core functions of a GM emulator. That means Oracle, yes or no, uh, structure to play scenes and to play prompts. Um, you've got some classical oracles, easy to access and a simple sheet where you take note of what are important actors in your game and multiple random tables that call those characters, those issues, those troubles of your story at random in your game. When to use it? Well, Blood and Folding Machine is good if you are like get stuck often in what can happen next. Uh, so mythic players might not have that problem because you play with expectations and you propose your next scene yourself and at the worst case scenario you just interrupt it with a random event made of two words. Blood and Folding Machine gives you a bit more concrete answers like uh, deal with PC's ba basic needs, it means like some of your characters might be hungry. Uh, bring someone helpful to the scene, uh, play a challenge or skill test. So it's going to be much more evocative in proposing what a GM could bring to your game. And then you have to think slightly less by yourself. Um, and then on top of that, you have a track of plot progress where can you use it uh, for marking how far you are in the plot. 
more into it of course but i hope you like this system take a look it's on edge next is the scene unfolding machine so the scene unfolding machine is a supplement i made it separate because you might want to play mythic with scene unfolding machine or your favorite other oracles with scene unfolding machine so i did not include it in the core system what it does is emulate gm actions so you get if you're looking for random surprises and more interventions in your game that are outside your own your ideas gm emulation does that the latest version has pc enrichment that means it gives you some ideas to how to improve your character's backstories and the biggest and most important features of some or some scene and folding machine is the npc emulation when you face or encounter new npcs who are they what do they want what do they say how do they behave these kind of things are given by scene and folding machine by proposing you opinions contributions uh, chit chat topics uh, whether they are lying or not etc and then you also get stereotypes to create npcs super quickly uh, as well as a very huge oracle multi-word oracle to prompt you ideas everywhere last but not least is the game unfolding machine it's the biggest of all 30 pages a bit less than that now in the latest version it's also separated because it's essentially random tables for you to play any game you want but with the peculiarity that these random tables are all abstract that means they are vague and non-setting specific so you can use this just this set of tables to generate whatever you want some examples are plot hooks generation um, scene design if you like just in how you can play your next scene um, you've got plot discoveries like a clue generator and a rumor generator and things like that character generation location factions object etc etc everything like very generically speaking like a nemesis generator like a big enemy okay past deeds what did they do in the past what makes them evil uh, or creature generation by ability by type by how they behave so you can choose and make use of these tables to generate content uh, without getting stuck mostly for improvisers i separated this because first it can be used for group games if the gm needs help coming up with ideas on the fly but also to play with any other solo systems you like i did not want to tie mechanics to it and for these reasons use all of them some of them none of them you choose my last two tools i have created in this year are prompty questions and transient predictions prompty question was pretty successful i would say the amount of downloads uh, surprised me what it is it's something very strange but extremely useful in practice if you apply it or know when to apply it it is essentially a list of questions that could come from the player to the gm what makes this useful is that it makes you think of things that you might have not thought about so there are six kind of questions in the extended edition location questions travel questions social questions world questions and backstory questions so for example let's roll a backstory question 75 that is are you part of any faction if not would you be so it's a backstory question to self-reflect over your own pcs whether they belong to a faction or not or would they be or do they have anything against any faction and it prompts you this thinking process it will not help you with the answer just a question but the questions are also a lot of content to roll another example number 10 for traveling questions represent what is it what is the weather mood or atmospheric feeling so you're traveling maybe you have forgotten to explain how things look like or feel this question is just like a prompt hey have you thought about the weather the mood is there fog is there good visibility uh, is it easy to be walking around here so questions that you should ask while you're traveling my last or and least also uh, favorite tool was not very successful not very good feedback about it to be honest but i've learned a lot with it transient prediction what is it it's another um independent way of playing solo i thought about and the idea is that you complete this sheet uh, under the principle the following principle you have to set up your playing your game in solo rpg your adventure your plot hook etc and make a prediction like how will it end 
imagine I am talking, talking, uh, Lords of the Ring author, and I'm just beginning with Frodo and some other characters, and then begin writing, and then I daydream a bit, and I say, this game is gonna end with Frodo in some mountain with some volcanic fire, and he's got to drop a ring uh, that's uh, alive into the fire to destroy it. And then you play. Since you are making a prediction of how your story ends, you just play along, keeping this prediction in mind, assuming it's true, uh, and you play. So this prediction essentially will give you ideas of what can happen next in between. So then you say, okay, Frodo finds this ring, could be how the game begins, right? And the mechanic in this transient prediction is that as you play, you're gonna be rolling dice every single scene you play. Most of the time you just proceed, that means this prediction you did holds true, but then eventually things will happen that ask you to change that prediction. So now you have to change something about you proposed originally. Uh, for example, a contradiction. Okay, it's not it's not a ring what you're dropping, it's somebody else. So this way you stay in the surprise and the prediction is not really like future seeing, it's rather like an, a compass that drives your game and you assume it true until it no longer is. So it helps a lot with like what can happen next kind of question. Uh, there's some twists and also some way that say, okay, strengthen the prediction. Okay, uh, it's more true than before. You add things that corroborate it. I don't know, try it. Maybe it helps some of you, maybe not. I played with it a few times. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, I admit. But that's, that's, uh, that's what it is and it's there for free. So happy if it prompts you other ideas maybe or ways to make it even better. All right, here is the tabletop simulator. This is the way I currently today play solo RPG. I know I don't play much analog because I don't have physical space around me. Um, but also a visual representation of things helps me a lot when playing. And uh, sometimes even an audience, I find it personally difficult to play on totally on my own, on my head. I need to either write a game down or voice it out. That way also I can like use my hands, wave my hands in order to explain things I don't have the words for. Um, but Tabletop Simulator I like a lot after I understood how it works because first I can upload my PDFs into it and uh, with pressing Alt I show it up on my face. So I can just quickly take a look at my books as if they were laid down on a table. Uh, so it's not great for journaling. It, it has some writing notebooks. You can write down here stuff, take notes, but it's like not really fancy, uh, to be honest, in comparison to Obsidian. But you can play a lot. But it's good if you're playing like a theater of the mind or playing by voice or not writing. It's great because you can put maps, um, use these figurines to represent characters, or even use from the workshop multiple miniatures all around fine. You can get miniatures and use them to play war games. Uh, so you can draw rules, rulers, um, you can move things around, roll dice with your hand like this, and essentially like really, really simulate a physical table. And also you can even play cards. I have uploaded um, Game Master's Apprentice card for myself to use them. So I can even draw cards. This I drew this line, uh, play with miniatures, roll dice, have my books here. And it's quite fun to play with. And I like tools that are fun because they are not on my way. They just enable me to get going and play. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I wanted to thank you so much for watching, following, hit the like button, leave some comment, friendly ones if possible. And I hope you learned something today and let me know if you would like to hear about anything specific in my next videos. Stay tuned. This is Jensen Vars and until the next one. Bye bye.